what's going on guys welcome back to the shop or welcome to the shop what are we doing today we just replaced the encoder bearing on this cart because it wasn't running right it was creeping called limp mode and uh anyways let's go to the shop show you the symptoms of a bad encoder bearing show you how to put one on well, let's get to it We got the cart in the shop here. We're gonna put it in reverse and give it gas. And notice it just creeps really slow. When we stop, we're gonna put it in forward and move forward. Same thing, it just creeps. Let's get it up on the lift. And I wanna uh, show you what it does when it's off the ground. Pretty much the same thing. We got it off the ground and it still barely moves. All right, as you can see, we got it off the ground. I've got it floored, and you can see it is just barely creeping. And you can hear the motor just kind of working against itself. That's a typically a typical sign that the encoder bears out. So we're going to rip it out, put a new one in it, see if it gets it going. And we're going to take the motor off. First thing we got to do: disconnect the main ground, the main negative off the battery pack. Then we gotta come down here and get some light on and uh, disconnect the three motor uh, wires down here, the blue, green, and yellow, because we're going to take the motor completely out. Then we'll jack it up, unbolt the motor, unplug the two plugs, the encoder bearing plug and the speed sensor, or the temperature sensor plug, and then we'll drop the, uh, the motor out of the cart, get it on the bench, and disassemble it and show you how to take the uh, coder bearing out and put a new one in. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these off and uh, we're gonna jack it up, get the motor out and we'll bring you back over on the bench once we get the motor uh, removed. So those are the, the steps to get the motor out. got the wires disconnected there's a few of these 10 millimeter bolts that go around the motor that's all we got to do is take those off and the motor and we'll take the uh, motor brake off too. disconnect it take it off and then we'll unplug the temperature sensor which is the two prong and then this is the encoder bearings sensor plug with the four wires we'll unplug those and we'll get this motor out just like that about six or seven bolts and a few plugs later we got the motor out I was able to get the motor out from the bottom on this cart but it's because I have a little bit of a lift kit they put on this cart so it gave me enough clearance to get it through right there but if you can't you'll have to take this back cover off and come out and through the hole right there the access panel with it just a little quick tip but anyways Real simple to get this thing disassembled. We're gonna take these two um, Torx screws out, get this cover off. Here's our uh, encoder bearing harness and this temperature sensor. And then we got four of these big long Allen screw bolts, Allen head bolts that come out. And the motor just comes apart. And we'll show you the uh, encoder bearing inside once we get it apart. So let's go ahead and get it disassembled and I'll bring you right back. Get the armature out, um, and all you gotta do is 
Let's take this snap ring off and it'll come out. And this is the encoder bearing on the inside right here. That's what we got to replace. And we got four screws that hold it on, that hold the retainers in, and then the one screw that's holding the wire strain relief. And that'll be it. All right, we got the snap ring off, really simple. Um, don't forget about this little leaf or spring washer. It's underneath there. That's gotta go back on there. That keeps it from rocking back and forth. Uh, anyways, this might be a little tight for you. Might get some rust in there. So we just give it a few love taps with the hammer and it'll come right off. Okay, we got the armature knocked out and it's time to get the new or the old encoder bearing taken out. Four screws, like I said, to get the retainers off and then this last screw that holds a little wire string on there. Here's the armature pressed out. And anyways, let's look at the, the kit, what we get. We get a new encoder bearing and new hardware. No need to use this, I'll save it, but I just reuse the old stuff, works just fine. Uh, anyways, let's get it swapped out, put back together, put on the cart, and um, everything goes back together opposite the way you took it apart, nothing special there. So we'll get it all back together and back on the cart, and we'll see you back over there once we get all that done for the test run. All right, we got the new encoder bearing put in and put the end cap on. I just wanted to give you a quick little tip, just in case you've never replaced ball bearings before. Uh, when you go to slide this back down, if it's tight and you have to kind of tap it, make sure you tap on the inner part when you go in, not this outer part, because what you could do is you could damage the inside of the bearing, um, the raceway is what you want to tap on. So get you a, a socket big enough to go over it and tap it down. And then, you know, we get it just low enough where we can get the snap ring in that groove, the little spring washer. Anyway, just a quick little tip I wanted to throw in there. Another tip too, when you're putting these uh, AC motors back together, they do have these little alignment marks. There's a notch in the cap and then a little tab on the field. Uh, anyways, that's how you put them back together. That way everything lines up right. Um, just wanted to show you that too whenever you're sticking these things back together. Okay, we got the motor back on the golf cart. Um, I haven't hooked up the wires yet to the controller yet. I'll do that in a second, but I wanted to give you another pro tip. This uh, electromagnetic motor brake is just held in place by a spring when it's not being um, used. So if you drop it or bump it when you take it off, that disc will get off center uh, inside of there and it'll be hard to get it back on and get the bolt, the three bolts to line up. So the way around that is to plug it in and go up and do your bypass like you would normally do to release it if you had to push it. Or you could put the cart in neutral and it'll release that brake and then you can line it up and get the hole centered up and bolt it on. And then once you get the bolt started, you can go back up, cut the brake off, uh, disconnect the bypass or put it back in, uh, turn it off. And it'll lock it back in place. That way you can get it on without fighting it. Cause I know, like I said, if you drop it and that disc gets off centered, it is a pain in the rear to get back on unless you do that. So anyways, pro tip, we got it back on, we got it bolted up. Let's go hook up the wires. Okay, motor's back installed. We got our wires hooked back up on the uh, controller. As you can see on there, BYG, B's on the outside, blue, Y's in the middle, green's on the inside. And uh, flip it into run and turn it on and see if she will move. Do me some of my yoga stretches self check give it some gas there we go look at that we got a runner guys and just like that encoder bearing replaced about a 30 minute job if you have a lift probably an hour if you don't having to lift it up with a jack and crawl under it and get through the access port but anyways this thing's running great now so if you like this kind of content, put an encoder bearing on your like button, spin it for me so it sends a signal to the controller and smash that thing. Subscribe for future golf cart repair videos and how-tos, and we'll catch you on the next one, guys.